welcome back to Forestry 101. Uh, today we're going to be talking about forest ecology uh, and why uh, understanding uh, the ecological processes and functions uh, of the forest is so important. And so forest ecology is the scientific study of uh, interrelated patterns and processes uh, of flora and fauna uh, and the ecosystems within, within the forest. And so why is this uh, important uh, to forestry and to forest management? Well, because knowing and understanding these, these processes uh, allows us uh, to influence the structure of the forest and uh, the interactions to favor uh, particular species or particular process. And so all trees uh, need certain requirements to grow and the ecology of the forest really dictates which tree will grow, which tree will survive, thrive, or die, uh, and which species will grow in a certain area and which species might not grow in a certain area. So as species interact and compete for resources, those resources being sunlight, uh, water, and nutrients, one species will typically be favored while another species will typically be disfavored. Uh, so that means this one particular species will outcompete another species for uh, limited resources. And so when species compete, we call that interspecific competition. Uh, when individuals of the same species compete with one another for limited resources, we call that uh, intraspecific um, competition. So as managers, we have some influence over the trajectory uh, of, of the forest. And so by controlling uh, stand structure, species compositions, uh, and in the timing that we, that we uh, intervene with the forest, we can really, uh, uh, we're able to achieve our management objectives uh, and really work within the, the confines of this ecological system to help us meet our management objectives. And so there are a few dominant factors that really play a major role in whether a tree will grow, uh, thrive, uh, or, or die. And these factors uh, include the life history, uh, attributes and strategies uh, of a tree, uh, the landscape history, uh, the light environment that the tree in the forest uh, is growing under, uh, soil and site uh, characteristics, uh, as well as pest, pathogen, and other uh, episodic uh, events or large episodic events that, that have a major uh, effect on, on the ecosystem. The results of these, these factors and interactions create a unique uh, forest setting, so a unique forest composition uh, of species as well as uh, unique forest uh, structures. And so the life attributes and strategies of a tree really come down to how a tree is adapted to grow uh, and, and reproduce in a certain forest setting. And so that uh, happens over time as a, as a species uh, adapts and evolves with the forest system to, to thrive and, and, um, and to reproduce and continually regenerate uh, the forest of that particular species. Uh, the life or the landscape history uh, is really related to the disturbance, the past disturbances, the disturbance regime uh, for that particular region and that forest type. And certain uh, disturbance regimes include uh, forest fire, uh, flooding, drought, other major uh, biotic and abiotic uh, disturbances. So light, we're talking about the quantity of light and the quality of light. <clears throat> so the quality of light is really related to the wavelength and the, the light that's coming from the sun to the forest. Uh, importantly, more importantly, the, the <clears throat> quantity of light uh, and that has to do with shade from trees and, and levels of, of canopy density as it <clears throat> reduces the amount of available light that's coming through the canopy down to the, the forest floor. And so this is a major uh, determinant of how well a tree will grow and, and how fast a tree will grow. 
<clears throat> and so different species have different tolerances of light. And so there's shade intolerant species which like to grow in full sunlight without a canopy uh, overhead. Uh, in fact, many of those species uh, won't grow at all under shady conditions. <clears throat> On the other end of the spectrum, there's shade tolerant species, which, which can grow and reproduce uh, in shaded conditions uh, underneath the canopy uh, and really uh, be maintained within that forest. Uh, when a gap opens up in the forest, they can take advantage of that and they're well suited uh, to move into the canopy at that point. <clears throat> so that creates this, these dynamics uh, in different structures in the forest based on the different light um, tolerances uh, for for a particular species. Soil is uh, an important uh, consideration and determinant of the forest in which trees uh, will grow, which species uh, of trees will grow in different regions. And so soil is really defined by, by the climate, uh, the organisms that are in the soil that, uh, that um, decompose and become organic matter uh, in, in the top layers of the soil. Uh, the parent material, the bedrock, uh, as well as topography uh, and time. So soils need time to develop and in more mountainous or more uh, areas that have higher topography, you'll see more erosion on sedimentation and, and distribution uh, of those, those soils. And so soil is, is essentially the parent material uh, acted upon by by climate and, and organisms uh, and modified again by the climate and the topography uh, to, to define the, that uh, particular soil type that will accommodate uh, or, or prevent certain species uh, from growing. Uh, wildlife is another important consideration uh, here in Kentucky, uh, as well as many other regions in the Northeast and in the Lake, Great Lakes states, uh, deer are a significant uh, a determinant of, of the forest in the species composition. Uh, deer are browsers and they're selective browsers and they'll select certain species, eat their bud tips, uh, and they might choose to not eat certain species uh, or they're not quite as tasty. And so uh, we'll see uh, deer can really control species compositions in a pretty dramatic way in certain regions where there's high uh, deer populations. Uh, lastly, pests, uh, pathogens, and, and other uh, large uh, events are really uh, fundamental in thinking about the forest, the forest structure, how forests uh, interact with disturbance, and so many trees are adapted to tolerate uh, a certain level of stress, and uh, these, these trees can really accommodate uh, endemic levels of many uh, disturbances. Sometimes we see stand replacing or large disturbances that wipe out uh, an entire forest. And when that happens, we're essentially setting uh, the forest back in time uh, and restarting the su successional state where we start to see uh, more shade intolerant species growing up initially. Uh, and over time, uh, there's more shade tolerant species that grow up underneath that, uh, gaps open, and so we get this multi-structured old growth stand uh, as, as forests uh, develop and go through these successional states. So tying it all together, we manage forest uh, as, as foresters and, and silviculturists uh, to control the structure, so the size, the, the number of trees, uh, the age of the trees. Uh, we control the, comp the composition, so the mixture of species, uh, as well as the timing uh, of, of our inter interventions. And so we can control the different levels within the forest when we come in and create uh, gap openings and create different structural layers within uh, that, that forest. So thinking about forest ecology and these natural forest processes, uh, forest succession and disturbance really go hand in hand uh, to develop a forest. Um, many times we as managers uh, are, are removing trees to essentially capture what would naturally be lost uh, or killed through competition with other trees. So we're freeing up uh, space and resources for uh, more uh, desirable trees and more desirable uh, species.
So uh, there's a lot uh, to consider when talking about forest ecology, and this was just a brief uh, introduction, but this will help set us up as we continue thinking about how we manage uh, forests as we go through uh, the next uh, few parts of this series. Mm -hmm.